Anyway, the thing is, I can't believe I'm here. I mean, me, Maud Findlay, actually talking to a psychiatrist. I, I mean, true, I have been a little depressed lately, but, well, let's face it, I need analysis like my daughter Carol needs water wings. <laughs> That's a little joke, because my daughter happens to be built like a... <laughs> Forget it. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, aside from a slight depression, I have everything in the world I could possibly want. A loving husband, good friends. Oh, I must tell you, I've always made friends and husbands easily. <laughs> Especially husbands. <laughs> anyway, I'm a perfectly normal, well-adjusted woman. So, what am I doing talking to a psychiatrist? Hmm, graduated medical school, 1962. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful, that would make you what? 35, 36? You're a baby! <laughs> I mean, how is a woman my age supposed to discuss her innermost thoughts with somebody who probably comes to work on a skateboard? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, just because I'm a little nervous is no reason to insult you. Look, don't you ever say anything. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's what I get for $50 a session, uh-huh. If I give you 60, will you bark? I mean, how am I supposed to tell a total stranger the most intimate details of my life? How am I supposed to bear my heart? What am I supposed to do? Blurt out that I think I've fallen out of love with my husband? Didn't mean that. It's just one of those crazy thoughts that pops into your mind. You know, like when I was a little girl, I used to have this thought about, about sewing my mother's lips together. <laughs> You're finally writing something down. <laughs> sure, I fantasized sewing my mother's lips together, and then I asked her to bite off the thread. <laughs> uh, but we all have those weird fantasies, don't we, Doctor? I said, we all have those weird fantasies, don't we, Doctor? Uh-huh. I really feel silly. I can't do this. Okay, you're just being self-conscious. Now, that's natural. Now, try and think of something that makes you mad. Uh, the trouble is, Doctor, I really don't get very mad. Well, what about the time that Cliff broke a date with you to go to Chicago with Gloria Murphy? Okay, so I was a little mad. Uh-huh. And he borrowed your suitcase. Okay, a lot mad. <laughs> Gloria Murphy sent you a thank you note. Okay, I was furious. Furious? Okay, I was furious. What did you want to do to him? I wanted to punch him. What else? I... I, I wanted to throw things at him. Do it. Huh? Do it. That's him by the door. Yeah, I don't see no, him. No, right there. There's nobody Show him there. how you feel. Tell him you hate him. I hate you. <laughs> Louder. Uh, I hate you. Throw the pillow at him. I hate you. Atta girl. Good. One I, more. I, I hate That's you. It. Good. Good. I Louder. hate you. That's you. Took Flory Murphy to Chicago. I hate you. <laughs> I didn't even know you knew about it. I'm shut. <laughs> Gloria Murphy. I don't know Gloria Murphy. <laughs> Uh, Schneider, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you were Cliff. <laughs> you thought I was Cliff? Cliff is 20 and good looking. I'm 40 and good looking. <laughs> 42. 43. 43 and good looking. I'm afraid this is all my fault. Oh, Schneider, this is my boss, Dr. Grayson. He's a psychiatrist at the free clinic. Oh, a psychiatrist? Yeah, well, it's my pleasure. Oh, I, I don't mean it's my pleasure. That's kind of like an ego thing, you know, my pleasure. <laughs> what I mean is, uh, it's a pleasure, I think. Uh, uh, when, I, when I say I think, I, 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 I don't mean, mean to be indecisive. I, uh, I love my mother. I love that woman. I do, too. <coughs> my mother. Oh. Uh. Doctor, why is it so hard for me to let go like that? You probably have a very self-controlled mother. I don't care who I car it is. Don't you ever put your foot on the brake while I am driving. <laughs> I thought I saw a garage sale. <laughs> what? I couldn't help it. It was my fault. I almost had a head-on collide. <laughs> Doctor, I'd like you to meet my self-controlled mother. 
I admit she's a little touchy, but why does it have to be an affair? Oh, Walter, when a woman wears dark glasses in the house, she's obviously trying to cover up the fact that she's been crying. Not necessarily. Maybe she's got a black eye. <laughs> You're such a comfort. Good evening, Walter. Hi, Carol. Just get in. Mother Phillips not in his room. Where is he? Oh, I forgot. He's having dinner over at Pablo's house tonight. Carol. Carol. Have you been crying? Carol, why are you wearing dark glasses in the house? Aren't you going to the hospital to visit Eleanor Halsey? No, that can wait till tomorrow. Walter says there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> Carol, are you having an affair? Just leave me alone, Mother. But that defies reality, Carol. You are not alone. Mother is here. <laughs> Carol, you have been crying. Mother, for the last time, will you bug off? Bug off? <laughs> now, that can't be what they meant when they wrote from the mouths of babes. No, not bug off. <laughs> You want to see if I've been crying? There. You see? You bet I've been crying. But Carol, you were always such a happy child. Sure, Ma, that's why I cry all the time. I'm so happy. If I got any happier, I'd be having an anxiety attack. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm beginning to get the whole story. Late every Tuesday, crying, anxiety... Carol, you're seeing a psychiatrist. That's right. Walter, did you hear that? How could I miss? I mean, you were 10 feet away from me. She was no more than six. Wait a minute. Sound travels at the Watch rate it. of... Work. Watch it. What's the big deal about my seeing a psychiatrist? For your information, I've been seeing him once a week for months. But Carol, you were always such a happy child. You said that before, Maude. I'm going in to get dinner. Walter, what is Carol doing seeing a psychiatrist? What are you doing feeling so threatened by it? Who said I'm threatened? I'm not threatened. There's nothing to be threatened about. Okay, then. Since she's in no mood to discuss it tonight, don't bring it up. You're right, Walter. I won't bring it up. I'll see that she brings it up. What <laughs> story? <laughs> now we can have a little of this here. I haven't mashed had beets in weeks. Mom. It's about time they brought some beets. Let me have some of that cut gravy. Oh. oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Carol. Will you please wait a minute? Now, how about you, Maud? Aren't you eating? <laughs> Boy, what's the matter, love? Pain in your tum tum? <laughs> Just you and me, Walter. Oh, great. Three portions to split two ways. <laughs> All right, Mother, that does it. I didn't bring it up. <laughs> didn't bring what up? Your psychiatrist. I didn't mention him. I didn't say a word. All right, Mother. I've been in therapy three months. The medical plan at the office pays for it. The doctor's a graduate of NYU, and his name is Bayard Stern. That's good. You know, Freud was Jewish, too. <laughs> they make the best psychiatrists. Dr. Stern isn't Jewish. Oh, really? Oh, well, they make good psychiatrists, too. Anyway, that's the whole story. Except for one thing. I was a good mother, Carol. <laughs> Probably. What do you mean, probably? Well, there's a lot I just don't remember, that's all. Maud, you have nothing to worry about. You're pro-psychiatry, remember? You've always been pro-psychiatry. So no matter how Carol comes out in her therapy, know that she'll come out of it stronger, healthier, and loving you all the more. What do you mean there's a lot you don't remember? <laughs> Pop, would you stop talking about this damn soap opera? As a matter of fact, just stop talking, period, all right? Well, what did I do? Nothing, but I've been trying to tell you, man, I've got a headache. I mean, all I'm doing is just sitting here watching a sad TV show and crying and enjoying myself. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I'm out there all day working my tail off on the truck. Why don't you clean this place up? Look at it, it's a mess. Paper scattered all over the floor. I bet you last night's dishes are still in the sink, right? Right? Shh. Remember, son, you hit it. <laughs> well, I've had this headache for two days. I'm going to the kitchen and take myself a headache pill. Pop, do you know there's not a clean glass in the whole kitchen? Hey, Pop. What? There's not a clean glass in the whole kitchen. <laughs> I'll get you. Oh, never mind. I've had this headache for two days, man. Well, listen, son. Uh, maybe I can diagnose your case. What? I watched Dr. Went Woodfield on, on Death Valley Hospital all the time. And, and maybe I can help you. Well, go ahead. I'll try anything to get rid of this headache. All right, then. Well, would you get up on the table, miss? <laughs> What are you talking about? Well, see, Dr. Woodfield is a gynecologist. <laughs> You're fooling around, man. I thought you were serious. Now, just leave me alone and let me get some shut-eye, and I'll probably feel better after the pills start working, all right? I'll be quiet as a mouse. All right. Since I had this headache pop, the least little noise is magnified a hundred times. So try and cool it, all right? Now that was sound. Beautiful. Just start cleaning up a little bit. <laughs> You remember in, in Death Valley Hospital <laughs> when, when, when Lillian got that headache and the doctor told her that she only had six months to live? Oh, that's just something they tell them silly people so they tune in the next day. <laughs> oh, that, that's, you're right, Fred. Yeah, uh, let's wake Lamont up. Well, why? Because if he only got six months to live, it seems a shame to waste some sleeping. <laughs> Wake him up, and I stand in behind. No, 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 Fred. No, no, he, he, he might get mad at me. So, so you wake him up. Well, he's already mad at me. So you wake him up, and I'll be right here. Okay. He looks so cute. <laughs> I just can't resist. Coochie, coochie, coo. <laughs> Freddie, what are you doing? Just leave me alone, all right? I got a headache. Let me get some rest over here. Oh, oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I'll go fix you a nice cup of hot tea, Lamar. Yeah, you do that. Yes, yeah, son, and, and I, I'll call the doctor. Hey, Pop, forget it, man. Doctors don't make house calls. They will if it's an emergency. A headache is not an emergency. Not an emergency? But what else is it? If you got a headache, can't go to work, you can't go to work, you can't make no money, you can't make no money, I can't eat. If I can't eat, my stomach's on the critical list. <laughs> All right, just do the suit yourself. You know, maybe if I eat something, I feel better. Yeah, well, there's one piece of roast beef there in the kitchen from left over last night. Good, Gooby, Gooby, this roast beef so ain't good. <laughs> Hello, it's emergency service. This is Fred Sanford. Sanford, S A N F O R D. Period. Yeah, I, I, I got to get a doctor out of here right away to 9114 South Central Avenue. Yeah, uh, who? It's my son. His head is killing him. How old? Uh, he's two. Uh, thank you, Miss. Bye. Pop, what did you tell a woman I was two years old for? Because they move a little faster when it's for a kid. Well, come on, Barbara. I want to show you what I bought for you, honey. You know, I just love to give gifts. It gives me so much pleasure. That way it never bothers me when people forget my birthday. 
Oh, my God. <laughs> Mother, it was your birthday two weeks ago. See? She didn't forget. Oh, Mom, I'm sorry. I had it circled well, right, on the calendar. Honey. I mean, I really it's feel right, stupid dear, it's about okay. this. It's okay. It's all right. I know you have important things on your mind. Barbara, come on. Julie, look at the darling present I bought for you. <laughs> my dear mother spreads guilt like peanut butter. <laughs> Doctor. Call me Bill. Bill. All right. I need some advice. Call me doctor. <laughs> I think that Bill is cheaper. Much. <laughs> I guess I'm just another one of those mixed up kids. At least when it comes to my mother. Yes, I noticed. Mm. <laughs> I find myself handling her, humoring her, tolerating her. Oh. 24 hours together, and I'm climbing the walls. Why do you think that is? I don't, I, I don't know. I guess, I guess deep down, I, I have this hostility towards her, and I, and I want to suppress it because I don't want to hurt her. Hostility, suppression. How about, damn, she makes me mad. That too. <laughs> well, you could try analysis. Of course, that could take years and cost thousands of dollars. <laughs> or you could spring for 20 bucks, you could take her to lunch, and tell her how you feel, your true feelings. You know, I can do that with my daughters. I can even do that with my ex-husband. But really talk things over with my mother, ooh, no, the sky would fall. <laughs> this no, stuff goes into the trash. Mom, what are you doing? I'm cleaning out your closets. <laughs> Mom, how about having lunch tomorrow? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mrs. Findley, what exactly did you hope to accomplish by coming here? I don't want Carol leaving home. Not out of anger. You mentioned her father. That was your first husband? No, that was my second. Oh, I see. Right now, you're married to your third. No, Walter's my fourth. <laughs> you know, life is trial and error, darling. <laughs> Actually, the only reason I married in the first place was to get out of the house and away from my mother. You know, you write that and they'll call you lefty. <laughs> Mrs. Findlay, uh, your mother, was she a tall woman? Doctor, I have no intention of going through my life history with you. I did not come here for therapy for myself, so there is nothing on my heart that I have to unload to you. And if you can't see that, then I think you're a terrible psychiatrist, and I think you ask ridiculous questions. She was five foot eleven and a half, <laughs> stocking feet. mother. Walter, I'm talking to you. She knows I'm moving tonight. She knows I wouldn't leave without saying goodbye. I think she's being darned inconsiderate. <laughs> well, it's about time. Don't bug me, Carol. <laughs> You want to know where I've been? All right, I'll tell you where I've been. I've been climbing Mount Rushmore with a pope. <laughs> Mother, have you been crying? No, I have a black eye. I think she's having an affair. Carol, that's your department. Mother, are you seeing a psychiatrist? I don't want to talk about it. Well, I know you couldn't be seeing Dr. Stern. He would have, would have talked to me. I said I don't want to discuss it. Well, how can I help you if you won't talk to me? I'm your daughter. And I'm your mother. How about the time I wanted to talk to you? 
I know. I should have let you, but I just couldn't. It's different, my leaning on you. I've always done that. So wouldn't it be nice if just this once you could lean on me? It doesn't come easy, Carol. I know that. You've always maintained that hard, crusty exterior. But inside... Mush. 